Hi friends and welcome back. I am so excited to get started working on this series and we are going to be working through this little mustard journal from start to finish. We'll be working in both signatures and I'll be taking you along for the ride. So I'm not going to leave anything out. I'm going to do my best to explain what my thought process is while I am creating and I hope that this serves as inspiration to you to create in your own journals. So as you can see, this journal has some embellishments already added to it. If you missed it, go check out the video um, where I just did a flip through of this journal um, before I even started. Um, so you can get a better idea of what embellishments I created or I made when I created the journal versus what I'm going to add as I work in the journal itself. Um, I'll try to tag that video so that you can go and watch it. I'm starting off on the first page here. Um, I'm taking a little, um, it's like the inside roll of some thread um, and just using it as a stamp. So I took some black gesso. Um, I love how quick black gesso dries and how opaque it is. I apologize, I am still getting over a cold here. So if you hear that in my voice, um, that is what that is. But I am on the mend now and thankfully back in my studio and playing. With these pages, I don't have too much of a plan going in um, a little bit just because it helps to give me a little bit of guidance. Um, I like to have stuff out on my work desk that can provide inspiration for me as I go along, but I try to let each individual page speak to me. So um, that can be hard to do since a lot of times we want to know what things are going to be before we even get started. I'm using this, it was a um, digital download that I printed directly on some dictionary text. Um, I used my floral punch to punch out that little leaf shape. And I think that's really fun to do on paper that already has a design to it. So you could use scrapbooking paper, you could use a digital download. Um, I have several digital downloads in my shop. Um, as always, any supplies that I use that I know where I got them, I will tag down in the description below. Feel free to ask questions about the supplies that I'm using, any techniques that I am using, um, and I'll do my best to answer you. I know that I want this little um, leaf on the page, but I want it to stand out from the background a little bit. Um, I want to add a little bit more interest rather than gluing it directly to the page without doing anything first. So I'm taking a few little scraps and collaging them down. Um, when I collage, I like to do it in little clusters. So oftentimes, um, I won't just do one little scrap or one little piece, but instead I'll, I'll do a little cluster together and that really creates interest in your pages. I am switching up the patterns that I'm using along with the colors of the different papers. So that was a little piece of craft paper and just playing around with the composition and seeing where I want things to go. This is a little charcoal pastel and I just want to get a little bit uh, more interest on that page. Some scribbles there. I already scribbled with my pencil at the beginning but that graphite pastel is just a little bit darker. Um, I don't have a lot of experience using that. It's a supply that I'm trying to get myself to use more. I really need to go and do more practice with it and maybe even watch some videos from some other makers to see how they use it in their work. Um, it is not a supply that I would say that I have mastered yet by any means, but I really try not to let that stop me from using a supply in my own work. Um, it can be very intimidating. So we go out, we buy all these supplies and we're so excited and then we kind of have stage fright before we start using them. It's like, oh no, how do I use this? And I think that's okay to some extent to have that 
um, I don't want to say fear, but that level of fear of like, how do we use it? But I think we have to get over that perfection that there's only one right way to use a supply. I think just start playing, see how it goes. Um, if it still is not coming easily to you, do a little bit more research, um, seek out other makers, other creators, see how they use the supply. Let that be inspiration to how you use it in your own work. Um, I wanted that floral to stick out from the background, that leaf stem a little bit more. So I went ahead and I traced it with a bold black pen. And now those art marks that were already on the page um, from the cutout, I am going to enhance them a little bit more with a white pen and even add a few more that weren't there from the beginning. So it's great to use those digital downloads as a source of inspiration for what marks you want to use, but then to add your own on top of it. Um, the great thing about digital downloads is that they're quick, they're easy, you can print them out and use them for a variety of purposes, but my favorite way then is to go and enhance them, add that texture back in, um, use your own supplies to then enrich it and to make it yours. I'm using my finger here with some black gesso to add a little bit of grunge to that background. Um, I don't want anything too severe, but I want to add some contrast onto the page. I'm taking a look, um, taking a step back at what I want to add onto the left side of the page. Sometimes the pages can really flow into each other and um, I work on them both equally at the same time, but other times it goes a little bit more like this where I do one side and then it's like, okay, let how do we incorporate the other side? How do we make it a cohesive spread? I know a lot of creators just do one side at a time and each page sticks out individually. Um, I've tried to do this in the past, but for me, I need both of those pages to be cohesive in some way. So when I flip through the journal after it's all done, I look at those two pages as one. To me, they are a spread and those elements should flow um, into each other. So I may not necessarily do them both at the exact same time. Like here, I did the right side basically and now I'm going over to the left. I think that's, that's just fine. I think you need to let the page speak to you um, and kind of determine how you work, not get so stuck in one way that it then becomes um, a block to our creativity. So in the end, just know with these pages, my goal is that they will be cohesive from the left side to the right side. That is not right. That is not wrong. That is just the way that I work. So when you work, find what works for you. Maybe you want the left side to stand on its own and the right side to stand on its own. Um, I think that is beautiful when creators do that. It just does not work for me. So I just do what works best for me. Now on that left side, I added a little bit of collage with a few little paper scraps. If I get stuck with what to do on the other side, I try to think about what elements I added to the first side that I did and bring them somehow into that other side. So I did those collage um, parts on the right side. I brought them to the left, not in the same way, but um, where they play nicely together. I thought that I wanted to add a little bit more of that stamp back in. Um, if you don't have a lot of stamps in your collection, I think that is just fine. I like to try to find different, you know, household items that can be turned into a stamp. So that was something that normally I would have just discarded and I use that instead as a stamp. I went ahead and hit that with the heat gun and now I could tell with this page that I was a little bit hesitant. I'm not quite in the flow yet in this journal. The first page for me is always the hardest. So I wrote a little note to myself here, no fear, just begin. Things get easier for me after I 
begin in a journal. There's something so intimidating about that first page. It's just like the blank page syndrome where we just we see a blank page and we don't know where to begin. It can hold so many possibilities, but it can also hold so much fear. That is why I often start with some scribbles on the page just to loosen up and um, to get myself moving and in the flow. I didn't want to add too much more here, but I felt like I still needed a little bit of color on the page. And so I'm using some vintage tape, um, just to add a little bit of interest, nothing to take away from the focal points that I already did, but to just add a little bit of um, intrigue. And I'm almost using that tape like I would any other collage element. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching the first spread in this journal. I hope that you will... Um, be looking forward to the next video and playing along with me as we create in every page of this little mustard journal. Have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you next time.